ladies and gentlemen, we are here with uh, DJ Camillo. Beautiful space, uh, blend on the water. Yeah, blend on the water. On this the water, is um, this is an accomplishment for me. You know, um, before blend on the water is blend LIC, which is really like seven blocks away from here. Yes. And that we opened up about 14 years ago. But that was real small. We, you know, me and a couple of my boys from high school we got together and said, "Yo, let's open up this restaurant." We didn't know nothing about restaurants. It's zero. And I'm here DJing like. Yeah, let's do something. I gotta do something else, you know? Right. And we just jumped on it. We were there for two, three years. Total, total catastrophe. We failed at it. <laughs> you know, we learned every mistake in the book. And then this came as an option, because this is a high rise, you know, it's Long Island City. This is yeah, like this is gentrification joke. land. Absolutely. So this landed on our lap and said, yo, this is like, look look at the city view, man. You got front rows yeah. to the city. Yep. So we ju jumped on this, and then of course we learned from our mistakes over there, and then this became a gold mine. You gotta crawl before you walk, and you look like you're running right now, man. Right? Yeah, running. yeah, yeah, yeah. Running a lot of things right now. Let's 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 dial it back a little bit. DJ Camillo, ladies and gentlemen, he is in the building, the International Club King. Uh oh. Now listen, I've heard that that nickname for a very long time. That means you've been running things for a while. So yeah, yeah. Shout out to you for that. Absolutely. Now. There's so many DJs that are successful and have parties all over the world and stuff, but you seem to be a staple in just about, I would say, in, in this nightlife. And, and, and it's just like, whether people want to deny it or not, you are a presence that, that is felt regardless. And it, that's, that's why I chose you as an elephant pick. Because I call myself the elephant in the room, but you are also an elephant in the room if you think about it, because you dominate things in such a quiet but powerful fashion. Right. And, and that is why you're the elephant pig, and that's why you're here. I just wanted to say welcome, even though I'm in your place here. <laughs> Thank you once again, playing on the water. But um, you are a prominent staple in that way. Why do you think that is? Um, well, for one, I've been on the, the game so long, bro. Like, you know, I started, I started in the 90s with the mixtape. That was my thing. I, you know, I started mixtapes only to get into the club. So back in, like, the mid-90s, I was getting no gigs. I wanted to do be the club guy, I wanted to do this, but nobody was hiring me, you know, it's, it's the come up game, right. so I started doing mixtapes just for the club promoters, mm -hmm. to get to know me, and I would go to every club and give it to the promoters, and I was doing these mixtapes, and um, people just asked me for, when's the next one coming, when's the next one coming, no clubs were calling me, I said, you know what, I'm going to start doing mixtapes, if they don't want to hire me, I'll do my own, so that's how I got my buzz, but at the same time, it worked in my favor, because the promoters were like, all right, all right, all right. So, you know, you're saying club stable, um, staple, you know, I've been doing this since like 98, the nightclubs in New York. You yeah, know? man, but there's been a lot of people that's been doing this since 98. There's been a lot of people right. around that's been well, doing this for a while. Right, that, that's, that's true, yeah, no so doubt. So there's an extra sasson here. Yeah, well, you know, I took, I took the nightclub very, you know, that was my main thing. I just wanted to rock crowds. That's all I wanted to do. I didn't, you know, I always wanted to be on radio, but... Even back then, I thought that was something that was never gonna happen. You know what I'm saying? And I just went heavy in the clubs, like, to the point that, okay, let me see, I'm gonna give you an example. Tess Smooth, back in the day, he was running the game. He was DJing every night of the week. Now, for you to be DJing every night of the week, back in those times, it's like, it's rare. You know, and he just, stu he stuck with Goongi, who was a big club promoter in New York. And I saw what it was, I said, okay, he's doing that, this guy's doing that. And then you had the bigger names, like, the flexes and the capris and and I was like, all right, all right. So what I want to do is I want to DJ every night. Right. Fuck that. I'm going whatever I gotta do, and that's what I did. I just just worked the game up. I started to meeting different promoters. I said I want to be able to DJ. You know, I was local, of course, but I want to be able to DJ in Brooklyn, Uptown, BX, Jersey, and it just became a thing, man. And um, snowballed into Avalanche. Right. With also at this point, I started working those mixtapes hard, man. And a mixtape made it over to Germany one day. Oh wow! Right. So the promoter calls me up, and emails me, and goes to me, goes to me. Um, you know, I want to book you. Off the rip, Germany. Nah. Off the email. Off the email. Ninety nine, nineteen ninety nine. I'll never forget that. You know. Wow. 
Yeah. Like I bought some, I bought some, some, some treats. You know what I'm saying? I said you gotta, you gotta try this. You gotta try this. You know what I'm saying? Pokey tacos. There you go. Arepitas. I want you to have this because this right here is will make some churrasco. Who ordered churrasco? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, you can put it over here. <laughs> Shout out to the crew. They ordered that. <laughs> You can put it right there in the middle. Warning. Mm -hmm. There we go. This is, this is Welcome great. to Blend on the Water. Yes, Blend on the Water, ladies and gentlemen. So, so like I was saying. Did like, you trust the email, bro? Like getting a Well, email I, at that time, time, you know, emails was, was like, not everybody had a computer back then. You know what I'm saying? Or emails was like, you know. So I did, I did kind of take kind of serious. And then I went to their website and they were real legit. legit. And um, yeah, I locked it in. Like money wasn't even a thing for me. I was like, I didn't even know what to charge these people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, you know, I just took the gig and and but it, 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 you know, I took the gig in Germany. I went there for the first time, and um, gracias. And it, it was it was interesting because that one gig for me opened a can of worms globally for me. So you know. Where, where it taught me not to say no to anything, everything right away. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you just gotta dive in, blindfold and just go in, and, you know? And I kinda, kinda stuck, stuck with that mentality. Don't say no to nothing. Unless it's like really- Ridiculous. Right, ridiculous, yeah. right? So I, I didn't say no to that. Fast forward, because of that one promoter, I've been around the world, bro. Like, you, ain't lying. I, you know, I've played in Russia, I played in, 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 like, real left for me, Finland, you know, no, Norway, UK, Dubai, Japan. You know, I just been, been to all these places that I never thought. That's goals, man. You know, a lot of people consider you the blueprint. Huh? A lot of people consider you a blueprint. Like, right. you are the blueprint to a lot, of, a lot of these DJs out here. And because you are the blueprint to a lot of these DJs out here right now, who are some DJs that you look at that are like, all right, that was my blueprint. This is this is this is my OG. These are the, these are the people that I look up to. For me, for me, I studied everybody on the radio back then. Everybody from Flex, Red Alert, Kick Capri, DJ Enough, Stretch Armstrong, Tony Touch, like all those guys. I was you know super young, and that's that's what I was you know eyeing you know. And then at the same time. When I started doing radio, you know, there was the guys that were like Green Lantern, DJ Envy, um, K Slay, like they were all running all the them? streets. Is there, and now, wait, before we go any further, is there just one DJ that you were like, all right, this is the guy that's like. Oh, uh, hands down, Capri. Yeah, Kid Capri. <laughs> hands down. But, you, you know, I was very young and, and he was the guy, bro. I like, I went to many places. I saw him play in Vegas. I saw him play in Miami, and this is when I was just trying to get on. Like I got to see him. His show was like no other. There was like no other, no other. And it is great to see him in other markets because you get to understand. Like he wasn't playing the same set in New York that he was doing in Vegas. Man, so I was like, wow. Yeah, I was whoa, wow. I was amazed. So to me, he was top notch. You know, and there, there was a lot of DJs back then, but that was that one guy. I was like, wow, this guy is. I think doing he's a blueprint it. to a lot of us DJs. He's a blueprint to, to, even before our generation, like, you know. Yeah, he's the one that set the trend, man. Like That's what I was going to ask you. But I think, because my OG is DJ Self. Self. Self is my OG. Like, I and I guarantee you, Self would say Kid Capri Absolutely. was that guy. Absolutely. And he definitely calls him an influence because he's had him on the show before. And he's, he's, he's definitely said, like, this is the guy. Maybe you can help me out with this. Was he the first DJ that was really like vocal, talking his stuff on the mic at the same time, switching records super fast? Was he the first one? I don't know if he's the first one, but for me, he was the first one. Uh, okay. <laughs> you know, me coming from Queens, I went to go see that. I was like, whoa, my man had a stack of records, like literally stack of records. And he's just slapping them on, going bomb, bomb, 10, 20, 30 seconds, bomb, each record. Sa catch like, him yeah, on cue. Catch him on cue. Like, this but is before computers were even uh, 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 even a, a, a thing, a thing, or uh, DJing off a computer. I wasn't even, what, are you crazy? So yeah, it was, it was that guy, you know, and um, 
you know, I mean, there were other, there were other ones too that get busy, you know. Um, but Capri was hands on. And when I see him, which is crazy, is I see him now. You know, he always bigs me up, and I'm like, damn, you got this guy bigging me. Up. That's crazy. It's still so Cap- right, yeah, it's surreal to me. Like, damn. But meanwhile, you know, I, it's crazy. I, I'll tell you a story. Like, even on my honeymoon, on my honeymoon, I got married, right? So. We took, we, we did a little Florida run, then we we're gonna take a cruise, right? So we went to Disney, to, that was part of the honeymoon, and we we're gonna take a cruise. When we got to Orlando, I'm in the car, in the rental, I, I hear a commercial, oh, kick a pre tonight at blah, blah, blah. I told wifey, yo, we gotta go. <laughs> we gotta go. We we're in Orlando, honey, we gotta go tonight. We gotta go. I like, dragged her over there. Wow. Boom. So we go, fine, great, ha ha ha. Then we go to Miami to catch the cruise. He's, he's in Miami. I said, yo, we are, are you crazy, Camille? We got to go, yo. We got, and we went. We went to the gig in Miami. Where I go check them out. It was great, man. You know, it was, you know, I got to see, like, your, your hero up there. Like, you know, so it goes to show how much I really appreciate it. Absolutely. You know? Fire. Now, is there anything you wanted to do besides DJ? Like, did you have um, any career... Before, let's say, before you wanted to be a DJ, or even after, like anything that, like, I would like, I would love to dabble in this. I, I don't want to say I, I want to. I don't want to say I, I loved it, but I was going to be an accountant. Yes, and I went and I went to college for it, and I was actually good at it. I was very good at it. And so you're great with math. I don't. I don't know, but I was good at. See, accounting math is different. It's not like electronic. Ele- Calculus. Right. It's not like that. It's, it's a whole different ballgame. But I was just good at it, and and. And I was went to accounting and took a couple of classes and I was doing great. And at the same time I took audio engineering and then I said, I'm going with what I love. And that's what I stuck with. I just I said, okay, I'm out. Boom. But that, that was one of my careers. I also wanted to be a, a, a pilot. A pilot? Yeah, but that never worked out. <laughs> Did you that, ever try, like taking classes or anything? Nah. Nah, in high school I wanted to go to aviation, but that, that never happened. Well, you saw Ludacris got his, uh, he got his pilot uh, license or whatever. They, they have a video of him on, on Instagram. Really? I didn't know that. We have a, a heavy hitter who flies planes. Wow. Um, our, our boy Fergie. Fergie. Okay. He's a heavy hitter, and now, now he's a full-time flying private jets. Wow. So wow. if you follow him on the ground, you get to see him. Like, wow, this guy's That's really crazy. doing it. Yeah. Now, I'm glad you brought up the heavy hitters because I was going to say, you know, your success as a DJ has brought you many opportunities to, you know, diversify your portfolio. For example, here at Blank, you also got a pizza shop. Slice. You wanna, and then you have, you have the heavy hitters as well. Right. And if I'm not mistaken, you also have a sneaker shop. Right. Uh, it's a clothing boutique clothing spot. Boutique yeah. Spot. So, okay. Which we carry sneakers and we do fitteds and shirts and we sell clothing and we also have art um, um spray cans graffiti for artists which is big in the city for us they come see us we got all the paint that you can't get yeah it's a big it's a big game so it's it's more like you know it's a very hip-hop driven uh, art gear so yeah i got that the heavy hitters which i want you to talk a little bit more about the heavy hitters yeah absolutely so so the heavy hitters you know that's you know i was always a fan of, <clears throat> fan of dj enough yes and early in the game before I got into radio, it was enough doing 98.7 Kiss and High 97. At the same time? It was one time, no. No, he started Kiss first and then and then High 97. Back then, it was him and DJ Threat. Threat was like, his helping him with everything. You no, know? but Threat was also the young kid like pushing enough, like, yo, yo, we need to start a crew. So they started a crew just them too. I was cool with enough, but not that close to him, but I was cool with him. You know, he was on the radio one day screaming, heavy hitter, heavy hitter, that. It was just them two down. And I hit him. That's it. It was, it was just them. And then one day, you know, I think Threat just coincidentally had hollered at Enough. Like, yo, we should put Camilo down. At the same time, I'm, I'm, I'm hitting Enough. Like, yo, what's this cool about? Like, what is this? And it just clicked. And they put me down as like, really the first guy to get down because it was just them two. So that was it. I was there from the from the start, you know, and that's how it started. And and you know, fast forward now to 2021, we have like 40 something, close to 50 DJs down with us. But going way back then, 
everybody got put down in a, in a way where it was just more a brotherhood, not a crew. You know what I'm saying? It was a family thing. Like, okay, this guy's DJ. He's just like us. He's humble. He loves the music. He loves, you know, he's not a cocky, you know, he's a, he's a people person. And that's what the crew's about. It's a real family, like we, a brotherhood. It's like a brotherhood. Do you think that's why, because a lot of DJ crews come and go. Right. To be honest. Um, and and as, especially nowadays, I feel like there's a new crew every day. Yeah, yeah, no, 100%. So why do you think the heavy hitters is able to, to be such a, a, a brand that people know as far as DJing and, and, and the culture of DJing? Why do you guys, why do you guys stand out? I, I think we stand out because just our motto is family, man. We, we are brotherhood. So anybody we put down, they don't just come and go for the most part. We had one or two DJs that came and left, but for the most part, the whole crew to this day is like this. You know what I'm saying? And everybody we picked or got down was from a different city or state that ran their city, you know, pretty much had the same motto as us, you know, loved the music, loved the culture, wasn't um, about themselves. That's the other thing, man. Like, with the crew, man, there's been times where, you know, some DJs go through rough times, man, like really fucked up times. They can't even pay their rent. And we've been there, like, yo, we're gonna put this collection together for yeah. so and so, cause he's fucked up right now, you know. And I think that's what's kept this family, like, you know, strong. Um, Extremely difficult, but a lot of you know, the more people that are added to DJ crews, the more egos. Yeah, yeah, and and the more the more you the more people you put down, it's harder to maintain, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You guys got you guys got people all over the world. We got people, yeah, from Japan to Thailand to the West Coast to, yeah, we have them all over the world. So, but you know, it's it's just our motto that we just don't put you down because it's gonna benefit you. No, it's gonna benefit the crew. It's not just about you. Oh, I want to get down because I want to be on radio, bro. You need to work if you want to get yeah. down. You know, I'm gonna give you a perfect example. My man Efezi in Miami, right? He wanted to be down bad. And this is before he was in Miami. He was in um, Kentucky, right? Yes, Kentucky. Kentucky. Yes, this is where he was from, living at. Okay. And, uh, yeah. If, he's, if, if it's not Kentucky, my bad. But I'm pretty sure it's Kentucky. <laughs> anyway, so he wanted to be down. He used to write me letters. He, I had a daughter. I, he found out I had a daughter. He sent a little teddy bear. I opened up the mail. I was like, the fuck? That Who's this kid? I didn't know he was easy from a hole in the wall. But he, for some reason, looked at the heavy hitters and wanted to be down. And I, I yo, you know, you know this, this Efezi guy? He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I heard of him. Yo, he been hollering at me. I'm like, oh, all right, well, this was a discussion. We went into the discussion. I don't think he got down the first time. He still was persistent. And then the second time when we were putting people down, I said, yo, Efezi, this guy, la, la, la. And then he just got, we put him down. Like you could not deny his. He wanted to be down with the crew. And he was passionate. He was on radio, and and there he is. That's just an example. Like like you really gotta want it. There's some guys that want to get down and they don't get down the first round. Fuck these niggas. I'm, <laughs> they went down the block to get down with so and so. Mm -hmm. And but the, you know that's not what it, what it's about, man. It's 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 a family, man. It's like you can't let everybody in. Yeah, I'm you sure know what I'm saying? You had people that, that have asked you directly, like, yo, how can I be happy? All the time. And I says, what I, is your response? Just to let everybody know right I, now. I say, you know, for the first, for the most part, you need to run your city. Just, you got to be the man in your city, number two. Number two, you got to have people co sign you. So, I'm not from, let's say, Charlotte, North Carolina, right? right? If there's a heavy hitter in that area, get cool with them. Don't come me, I'm in New York City. Get cool with them. Let them co-sign you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And 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 you know, feel you out like that. Um, the other things is is you know, get to know everybody. Just not me. Just not enough. Get to know the rest of the crew. You know what I'm saying? That way, when it's time that your name comes up, everybody calls like, oh yeah yeah, I fuck with that guy. Yeah yeah. You know, it, it takes time, man. But you know, you gotta work at anything you do. You gotta work for it. So if you wanna be done with this you gotta work for it, man. You know what I'm saying? Show show what it is. Like, and we ain't some stubborn dudes. And there's some knuckleheads in the crew where they're very. I'm gonna give you an example. Elbugs. 
My guy. Hardest guy. <laughs> Fuck like, that nigga. Why is he? Why are we gonna put him down? No, no, no. Who's that? No, no, no. He's but a he, savage like that. But but it's good. It's it's a balance to the crew because you know mm -hmm. it checks. It, it makes you answer why he should be down. El Bugs, he should be down because of this, bro. Back up, man. Chill out. <laughs> this is why he should be down. Or her. Like, you know. So you need those in the crew. Yeah, he feels like that now. Like, when somebody comes up, he goes, do you know what it took me to get down with this crew? I was sending this man gifts. I was, blah, blah. you know, so he's passionate and I get it. Right. Like, you know, you need to be like that sometimes. No, you do. Can't right? let everybody it's in. A bad, imagine, if it was everybody, then there wouldn't be no chemistry. Right. So... What is your title in that year? You, you are the president, correct? No. I'm confused. I am, no, I'm the vice president. Vice president. A uh, president's enough. Enough is... I thought he was like CEO. He's the guy. He's the, he's the main guy. Okay. He's started the crew. It was his idea. Him and DJ Threat. Threat. Rest in peace. Yes. They were the ones that started the crew. So enough's the guy. Since I was pretty much the second guy put down, I'm the VP. You know what I'm saying? And I've been there since day one. So Happy Yeah. Absolutely. You know that that's 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 what it is. Shout to DJ Enough. Absolutely big shout out to DJ Enough. DJ Enough. And I'ma tell you one thing now that we're talking about DJ Enough. I owe that man a lot. I owe that man everything. When it comes to radio, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be on that box the way I maybe I would have, who knows how the but because of him, I am on that radio because of him. Hands down. He um he helped me. He helped me. You know, and I started from the bottom, from the bottom. So one day. Did you call him your OG? 100%. Okay. 100%. Um, you know, he was doing the morning shows with Star and Buck. Mm. Classic days. Yes. One day he calls me. Yo, I need you to fill in for me. I'm like, what? <laughs> in the morning. I said, yeah, you in threat. So here we are, grabbing enough crates. In the morning, showing up to fail for it. Star didn't know. So you know already, Star. They didn't get the warning? They didn't get the warning. <laughs> and, you know, what are you guys doing here? You know, straight up, on the radio. Oh, my goodness. La, la, la. And it was, it was, you know, it was an experience. It was cool, though. It was cool. We knocked it out. We did it. I'm nervous as fuck. You know, can you, can you imagine never being on the radio ever? And, the, the, you know, we're talking about Star and Buck Wild days. Like, how they said this was on another level. Yeah, that like, was, that was like they were they were like at that time that morning show was it mm -hmm. there was nothing else absolutely and just to be and, and and you've never been on the radio ever before you just got thrown in the fire yo bro it was it was crazy my hand was now something put, put it put it put in the need on the record my hand was like this big shout out to, to l books and big shout out to angie martinez and i'll tell you why because angie martinez always told me something she told me you either you sink or you swim. What are you gonna do? And that kind of transitions into L Books was the reason I got to DJ on air. L Books said, Angie, let's put this kid on air. Threw me in the fire. He said, You ready to DJ uh two days from now? I was like, Yeah. <laughs> so, no, you can't you know say mean? no. You can't say so no. Here I am making my debut on radio on Angie's show. Yeah, that's and, big. Bruh. I was just like you. I was just like uh, yeah. I did. I did. I filled in for for enough many times for Angie's show, mm -hmm. many times, and um, but at that time, by the, by then, I was ex more experienced because I was on the radio already, and it was great. And you know, the thing with Angie, the thing I loved about playing with Angie is like, you got on and she just went there her nails, do her own thing, yeah, do her own thing, yep. and she let me rock. And yep. uh, when it was overtime, and you know, yep. the mics. And, so you know she she doesn't she, micromanage when it comes to that. Yeah, you know I guess she she's trust enough, you know, to trust us and you know they know what they gotta do whatever and it was cool. But you know being back then on Angie's show was the voice in New York is like you know a lot of, yeah, it's crazy it's, man. Then, big shout out to, to enough to El Books to Angie to the heavy hitters absolutely. Now let's talk about the pandemic. Man. There's no way we can't talk about it. Right, facts. I mean, it, it's been undeniable what the, the impact that it's had on the entire world. There's no way you can talk, can't talk about it, right? There's a mask <laughs> everywhere. Everybody <laughs> got a mask? mask uh, <laughs> shout out to the Warner Mask. Now, I want to know how the pandemic has affected you personally. I want to know how it's affected your businesses. I have so many more questions, but I just want to start off with that. Personally, I mean, look, it changed everybody around the world. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? 
And I'm going to tell you, I think it was, for me, it was a good thing and a bad thing. So, for me, a year ago, pretty much this week, right, I was doing 100 miles on the third lane. Meaning, I was out and about. Absolutely. Doing two, three gigs a night. Most of the time, I didn't have a night off. Doing radio every day. Mm -hmm. And then that shit came into a complete halt. The only thing that didn't stop for me was radio. Besides that, halt. I was home every day, having dinner every day. I started doing my radio show live from my house every day, which I never thought it would happen, ever. I did not know that. Yeah, so I'm live every day. To this day, I'm live from home every day. Wow. So to me, that was kind of a blessing. Because now I'm like, yo, I don't know if I need to ever go back in. I love this shit. <laughs> this shit is great. Like, I'm home, you know. I've done, yo, there's days I've done the show in my PJs. Beautiful thing. Nobody, nobody can see. Ever. <laughs> so, so that's one thing. And just to think that, literally, I'm live from my basement in the whole city. That's, to me, it's crazy. That's, that's crazy. Technology, man. Check line, crazy. On, the, on another, you know, flip the coin. I got to spend some time at home that I needed bad, man. Like, just just do regular shit. Just a lot of, you know, a lot of changes, man. And, and that's a blessing to me, because it would have never happened if this pandemic never hit. So, you know, um, but then on the flip side, yeah, work was zero, money was zero. You know, my businesses were shut down. You know, uh, we had to reinvent the wheel, meaning, the way we did business with, with, with the pizzerias and, and, and this takeout and we had to, you know, off, like, I'm going to give you an example. They gave us permission to do takeout and do takeout with liquor. So that for us said, okay, we're going to, all right, we have to flip the game now. Yep. So we made these frozen drinks popular in the summer for us. I'm liking this. Yo, bro, <laughs> I had people from Brooklyn driving a blend just to get, for, you know, and, and you know, we, were, we had to redo every week. We re strategize everything restaurant wise, and it was tough, man. It was tough because it hit us, man. You know, landlords still wanted their rent, yeah, absolutely. You that know what I'm change. saying? Um, you know, we had a little go of staff like this place right here, Blend the Water. We have like 200 employees here, bro. Wow. We had to let go of 80% of them, man. It's tough, man. We know people here for dumb long that have families and so we're close, right? Like anybody, you right. Don't get rid of anybody. Yeah, it got crazy, man. So, so you know, all of that, you know, got got difficult. Business got difficult. It got scary. I didn't want to go out either because yeah. all this, we didn't know what the fuck was going on. At all. So it changed, you know, all that changed. Um, what else besides business and clubs and all that? Did you learn anything about yourself during this pandemic? Obviously, we're still going through it, but like I feel like the worst part has is, is behind us right now. But is there anything? Cause this took a lot of time to like self reflection. Right. So, is there anything you learned about yourself? Like, for example, I learned that I love cooking. Where? Yeah, I, I was stuck in the house. <laughs> I said, you know what? I'm gonna cook my ass off, and I've been cooking ever since. I love it. Oh That's shit! Yeah, Yo, we got a kitchen here. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, damn. I think, I think I learned. Well, I realized, not that I learned, I realized that I was pa a very patient dude. Like, I never knew how patient I was. I think with, 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 um, with this pandemic, everybody was panicking and stressed and this and that. And I would turn around and be like, yo, chill out. Like, I wasn't, I was like, yo, chill. We're, like, we're going to get over this eventually, you know what I'm saying? Chill out. Maybe enjoy it. And it sounds crazy for me to say enjoy this situation we're in. Yeah. Just, yo, we, you know, we're home. We're safe. We got food. You know, I, I learned that I was, you pay, I'm a patient dude. Maybe I was the Libra in me, I don't know. <laughs> How do you we, feel about secret location parties? Um, I feel that it is what it is. You know, it's, it's listen, it's like the Prohibition era. <laughs> wow, that's a good comparison. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's like, you know, when you couldn't drink, but you wanted to have a drink. Yeah. We were having a drink, but there was a time when we couldn't do this. Yeah. You know? And here you are in the pandemic and you want to party and do regular normal shit that you've been doing and you can't. And it is what it is, man. People got to survive, man. 
DJs gotta survive, hookeros gotta survive, bartenders, promoters, waitresses, bottle girls, security. And that's the only way they knew how to do that. And how can you hate on that? You know, yeah, it's risky. Yeah, it's dangerous. Yeah. Um, at the same time, it's helped a lot of people. Yeah. At the I same do, time. I do, I do secret location parties. Huh? I, I do secret location parties when I can. Because at the end of the day, listen. Right. I, at the end of the day, like you said, the landlord doesn't care. Right. The bill comes regardless. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, 100%. And, and, and on that same tip, you know, um, a lot of upcoming DJs have gotten shine. Yeah. They've gotten to work every single night, which they never used to. Yeah. Because of it. Because, you know, they're, they're, they're available, they're cheap, they're willing to do it. Um, how can you hate on it? You know, yes, it's illegal. Yes. Um, it's potentially dangerous, yes. It's right. And, but for the most part, you know, it's helped out a lot of people. So I, I don't hate on it. I don't. You know, I, I haven't been to them. You haven't seen me in them. No, not at all. You haven't seen my name on none of them. Not at all. You know, but for me, like I said, patience, man. You know, we're going to get over this. And I've been doing, me personally, I've been doing dinner parties. I've been doing some brunches, some legal stuff here, a lot of Jersey stuff. I've been traveling where the shit is open. Yeah. Like Florida. Florida's wide open. Wide open. I've been to Florida. Bro, I've done Tampa for Super Bowl, West Palm Beach. You name it, Orlando. I just got back, Miami. We just and them, the them, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> you see me going right. And them, them boys, they open. They rocking. They are rocking. And I let the first, the first gig I did, it was in December. And me, and Big Lou, walked in there with our mask on. And Looking when I crazy. tell you, yes, when I tell you, <laughs> the entire club and this shit was packed. It was like six hundred people. The entire club had no mask. And it's me and Lou. And then we get to the booth, we still have our mask on. You start to feel uncomfortable, bro. It's like everybody looking at you like. Yeah, you looking like, you, like, what are you doing? Like, right. So I get on, take my mask on. Of course, I'm in the booth. Yeah. Take my mask on, rocking, and, and, you know, a couple of drinks here and there. You can start to forget, too, that there's a yeah. fucking pandemic. But Florida's different, man. Florida's mentality. Florida's different. Texas is different. Oh, yeah. A couple of places. Connecticut is opening up 100%. I think probably like in the next week or two or maybe they're already open i don't even know it's only a matter of time for new york right but i also think we're going to be one of the last ones we probably will nah I, we probably will no we are we are only because it's politics man exactly and when politics politics is running this shit right now and they could probably open a little like example this restaurant we started with 25 percent then they shut us down. Yeah. Then they shut us down again. Then they started with 25% again. Now we're at 35%. And and the numbers the numbers show that most of the, you know, um con, you know, getting getting it right is not coming from restaurants, it's coming from home and family gatherings. Yeah. Which That's is what, almost impossible. Right. Right. You can't stop that. You can't, you know. So so you know, it's politics, man. You know, I'm not gonna sit here and, 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 and shit on the governor and shit on the, I'm, you know, at the, at the end of the day, they never been through this, right? Um, they don't want on their watch all these all these deaths and all these, you know. Everybody's kind of going as it is. Right. I mean, but am I tired and sick, done and sick of it? Yes. I, I, I feel the same exactly. <laughs> and, 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 and will I get the vaccine once it's available that's for me? I was gonna ask you that. 100%. You know, some people are, I've had people tell me like, nah, I'm not going to, by the way, I've gotten both doses of the vaccine. Right. I've gotten Moderna, the Moderna vaccine, both shots. I felt like, all right, so once when I got the first shot, like the next, in about 10, 12 hours, I, I felt like total shit. Right. Because you feel like crap, because you know, they inject a little bit of the virus in you. Yeah, I know. So, so your body could fight it. I felt like total crap the next day, totally fine. So. But I heard the second one is the one that. No, the second one, I felt the same exact way. I oh, felt yeah? crap, and then... Did your arm hurt? Super swollen right? Yeah. Oh, my God. It, and, then, and then on top of that, I get the conspiracy. Because I got some exactly. conspiracy friends exactly. that hate me with crazy shit. So do I. Listen, my, my boy Chu. My boy Chu told me this. Who? Chu. 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 All right, Chu. 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 <laughs> Chu told me he's not getting the virus until like 
more millions. The vaccine. Take, oh, I'm sorry, the vaccine until like many more millions take it so you can know. Which, by the way, true, 100, uh, 100 million have taken it already. Look at that. And I'm one of those 100 million. Yeah. So, you know, he's he's always told me, like, nah, you know, I don't trust that. It's just a way for the, you know, the government to do the start of Shikes. Yeah, I heard, I heard, I heard the vaccine got something on your arm where it detects it when you even go into a federal building. Like a chip. I guess so, yeah. It makes, whatever. Like, they'll detect when you go into a federal building. It's not, I'm like, God damn, yo. You're, you're talking crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's too much. I yo, just, it's a vaccine, man. Like, listen, to this day, I've never taken a flu shot. Me to either. this day. Ever. Neither. Ever. And I never wanted, at this point, I'm like, I never oh, yeah, took a flu shot. Yeah, I never took it. When you get sick, you get sick. It's part of the system. You're immune. Bam, 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 bam. But now with this whole vaccine shit, just, just to shut the wifey up, uh, okay. you know, I got family and, 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 and not only that, we're outside, yeah. you know, we're outside working in front of people. People want to come and take pictures with me. Oh, the hug, the this, care. right. You know, and then, you know, I want to take a picture. How do you say no to somebody want to take a picture? They don't care. So to avoid all that, let me t- take this vaccine, get over and done and keep it moving. Yeah, you know, That's it. It is what it is. And shout out to, to Johnson and Johnson. They got the one shot. I don't know anybody that's gotten that one yet. I do. So, you do? Yeah. Okay, so like I've gotten Moderna, my girlfriend has gotten Pfizer, but like I never heard anybody that got the Johnson Johnson one. My, one shot. My wifey got, I think, the Moderna also. Yeah, she got the Moderna. And then yeah. she got, she, and the second shot fucked her up. Ah, uh, so she was good for the first one. First one good. But not fucked up, got her a little under the weather. Not fucked up all the way. Exactly. Like, her arm though was killing her. Uh, yeah, it's super sensitive. Now, I'm glad you brought up your wife because. Family man Camilla. <laughs> you know, sometimes you, you, you have different, um, I wouldn't say personalities, but different parts of you. And family man Camilla is something that people on social media love to see. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, how this nightlife game is, is, is a very savage game. I don't need to explain it to oh, you. Oh, yeah. So, how do you find the balance between work and family? Like, how, how do you. You know, after so many you, years, here's the thing shout to wifey, number one. I met her way before it was DJ Camelo working every night and Camelo on the radio and Camelo traveling. So she's been there before that. She's seen the growth. She used to run with me from record shop to record shop to drop off mixtapes. That's how far she goes back. So she's in seen in the trenches. She used to hold me down. She used to pack up tapes with me. Like, like she used to get it in. And you know what's crazy? Shout out to the, the DJ Envy too, because Envy went through the same shit. Same shit, and she's a trooper. So she's seen the growth. She's seen to what it is today. You know, I took her to Europe for the first time in her life when I was gigging, and I had seven gigs in Europe, and I said, come on, let's go. I took her with me. She got to see it, man, and you know, she respects it. We have this understanding, bro, that most girls no it's not <laughs> and i know what it is most girls w- wouldn't understand it you know there's a lot of times i'll be in a club they so girl how does a girl do it because why is she not here because if i was if you was my man i'd be right here blah 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 and i'm inside i'm like bitch that's why you're not my girl I'm like, <laughs> Hello? you know like really but where's she at la 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 and you know and, and, you know it's like okay no doubt but, you know, wife understands what it is, and she, you know, that's why I big her up right now, because she knows what it is. And so we try to separate things, and, when, you know, when I get home, I try to make time, man. I try to make time. Like, like me, personally, I like You're to hang out with my kids. Time. Right, but, exactly. <laughs> but, 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 when, when, before the pandemic, I was doing the radio every day, then doing two gigs at night, but I would come home after the radio and always have dinner with them. And for some reason, that became the rule. Like, unless I had some industry meeting or some restaurant shit that I had to do. I was home having dinner though. And then it just became a thing that I had to make it happen. If I was in town, we was doing that. And you know, I think that's for a family to be together, that structure is important, bro. Mm -hmm. Super important. Like I need to know, slap my kid up and say, what happened to school today, yo? Yeah, what? You got in trouble for, like, you know, just little things like, it's important, man. And the balance, bro. Now, all I can say is you got to balance it out, you know. And I'm going to drop a little gem right now. 
a lot of DJs that have issues with their girl, they always ask me, yo, how do you do it, man? Because my girl, because my girl, that's always a quite the, 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 the scenario. My girl this, my girl that, and I always bring you up as an example. And I go, you know, it's just part of it. You know, if you're being a sucio, then you're gonna have issues. That's right. It's really that simple. If you, that's it. <laughs> that's it. Mm -hmm. If you're not being a sucio, then your girl's always gonna bitch. That just comes with the territory. And if you're not sucio, then don't worry. Deal with this. You know, invite her out. There you go. And that most of the times, you know. But that's that's facts, man. Like, bro, you don't want issues. Hey. So you know what I'm saying? Don't cheat. Right. <laughs> Dominican man, what? Don't cheat, ladies and gentlemen. That's a fact. You gotta stay focused. And and you know what? And that and, and I'm glad you said that because it, you, that's you the bottom focused. line, man. You stay focused when you're not playing around, when you're not doing extra curricular right. activities. Absolutely. Um. But Camilla, I wanna I wanna get to know more about you, not just as a DJ, man. Like what what kind of music do you like, bro? Like besides what we play? Because listen. I will keep it G real with you. 90% of the shit I play in the clubs, I don't listen to much spare time. I act like I like it in the clubs because I have to. What do you like to listen to? Like, I, 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 I wouldn't I, 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 um, me personally, when I'm home in the summer, by my pool, I like house music. Yeah? I love soulful house music. I love Little Louis Vega. Um, I love Oscar G. You know, I like house music a lot. And, and don't get me wrong, I listen to it all. I listen to all types of music, you, you know. To. Yeah, you have to. And, 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 and especially nowadays, I think music comes and goes fast. Faster than ever. You know? Um, so it's hard to keep up with everything. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to... Shit, like... An artist now, I'm give you an example, CJ. Just an example. Biggest fucking record right biggest record a year ago I didn't know him we didn't know him yeah. fuck a year ago seven months ago we didn't know him I give you a fun fact I remember I don't know if that was the first time we met him but we were both on the bill for barcode on the Sunday I think that, that was the first time I ever saw him but I yeah. didn't know who he was and he pulled up yep pulled up. yeah I remember that I remember that. and 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 just like a lot of artists I don't know, I want to say five to ten years, you could see them coming up, building up, and you get to meet them early. You know, nowadays you get a, a situation like CJ who just blows up, yep. and it's the biggest shit. Overnight, you know what I'm saying? Right, so it's, it's hard to keep up with music now, because it comes and comes and goes, comes and goes, comes and goes. So, with that being said, I like all types of music, and yes, I don't love everything I play in a club. I don't love everything, you know, you right. can't, as a deep, you know. You can't, but you gotta play it. Yeah. You know? And you gotta make a movie while you're playing it too. You gotta, you make, gotta make a movie out of it. And and at the end of the day, it's I gotta tell everybody, it's not about you or me. It's about them. You know what I'm saying? Yes. While you're on the set, you try to be Camelo or Frank Roth all the time, but you gotta cater to them. Yeah. You know. Daylight. Right. It's 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 eighty percent them, twenty percent you. Twenty percent being you rock and your style and your way and people know you for who you are but the other 80 percent you're catering to them top three favorite artists of all time that's hard it's always hard for me it's always hard because that 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 changes all the time but i mean top it three a lot. It's, it's just so many man in no particular order all right let's let's keep it to hip hop. how about that right. does that make it better yeah yeah it's so many though but you know i definitely you know hands down it's everybody's pick nas just won a Grammy, his first Grammy. Right, first, right. And and me being from Queens and just all of that it's from the rip. The second Jake, you know, JJ and um, that third one, man, you can go so many ways, man. It's shit. Somebody that went I get stuck, I get stuck, I get stuck because, you know, pun I love, big I love. <laughs> pun. Yo, Pun to me was, bro, he, he, to me, like, I got to meet him. I got to hang out with him, you know. And then his music, you know, 
and then Biggie's just big. It's, it's that's tougher. That third one I'm gonna leave for pun and just pun and Biggie the, pun, yeah together. <laughs> <laughs> Rest in peace. But yeah, like no, you you had well those those artists that you named. And what I just named, man, is like a lot of people's favorites. Like yeah, you know, for the more older because the young generation they get care less for Nas. You know, they could care less for Hove, the GOAT, you know, and Biggie and, 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 and um, Pun. I'm, I'm glad you brought up that, like, the new generation and stuff like that, because I'm going to talk about the older generation or, like, the veterans in this DJ game versus, like, the newer generation of DJs. Like, for example, I would say um, with all the different technological advances in DJ, you know, there's been a totally different style of DJ now yeah, yeah. emerged. Everything has changed as far as equipment, the way you talk on the mic, the way you dress, everything. It it, it leads me to what's the do, does good DJing matter anymore? I think so. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. Um, doesn't matter everywhere. Ah. Okay. So it it doesn't matter at a strip club as much, but I guarantee you it matters in a big dance floor. You got a big dance floor, and you want to make keep that crowd there and happy. It means a lot. Um, smaller rooms, not as much, I think, just because you know there's a lot. There's not as much dancing as there used to be. At all, back there's in the barely day. any. Da- there's right. no dance floors in but, New York, barely. Right, right, right. But then when you leave town, you know there are dance floors. If you want to be a Vegas DJ, you have to be a pretty good DJ. You can't be, you know, even technical wise. If you're not technical wise here, then you're technically very good on that mic and being a host. You know what I'm saying? Um, the bigger the room, you got to be good. I think. The smaller the room, you can get away a lot with just regular. I'll give you a fun fact. That makes sense. Yeah, in a, in a way, in a, in a way, I get it. But at the same time, I have to tell you the story. So one time that I, I had a gig, YouTube lined me up with a gig. I was super excited. It was my first time DJing. Big YouTube. check, Big check. Absolutely corporate check. Super excited. Uh, only to get the news that oh, I got replaced by another DJ. So I was like, who's the other DJ? Tanasha. Oh, the uh, R&B girl. The R&B artist. Wow. So I found that comes with that comes with this that she DJed. I didn't even know. I didn't know neither. I don't know. So I was like, all right. So now I see. And she mad cool. And ever yeah, she's dope. She's super dope. So ever since that day, I don't know if she's a good DJ. That I don't know either. (laughs) That I don't know either. But ever since that day, it just changed my perspective on things. Where it's like, does it matter? Well, look, it's YouTube. So they're going, they're not going to go with the, what DJ technically is better and has more experience and is nicer. They're going with what looks better in a camera and name and a buzz and all that. You have to, I, I'm assuming that's what it is yeah. for the most part. You know, um, that's a perfect example is Paris Hilton, yes. DJ that Live. You know, DJing everywhere. She's going to draw. Yep. You know, and, oh my God, Paris. Oh, she's going to draw. So I understand it. It's, it's, it's borderline a gimmick. It's a gimmick. You know, does anybody take her serious? Does anybody go here to hear her play? <laughs> no. They go to see her, you know, and, 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 you know, with, with technology, like you said, you know, it's easy to become a DJ because now you don't, you're not carrying eight crates like I used to. You know, now you got a laptop with your music library of what you're gonna play and that's it. It's a little easier. Um, Some, some grow with it and some is just, it's just a gimmick. For the most part, the ones with the gimmick, they don't, they don't do this 24 hours like us. You know what I'm saying? You gotta take it for what it is. what well, makes sense to me? Little John makes sense to me. Yeah. Because he's a producer. He yeah. knows music. Be, be, you know, because to me, he started DJing after the production. You know, yeah. um, and, but then you have Shaquille O'Neal. Shaq. Shaq. Getting the big checks. Big DJ. checks. But, you know, Shaq, you know, 
such a lovable person. Yeah, and, and right. He's a fucking yeah, exactly. He's an icon. So we're gonna go see Shaq play. Like it's, it's a gimmick, and and he might be good. I never heard him play. Me neither. So I'm not gonna throw him. I don't. I don't know. He might be. You know, he used to rap. <laughs> yeah. You know, he got songs like you know. He likes roots. Like he knows. So he might. He might. His selection might be good. I don't know. So I, I, listen, man. You gotta take it for the good from the bad. Like he might be entertaining, and 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 just the fact that you could be a DJ now, and I don't want to say anybody could be a DJ, but a lot <laughs> of know, people you could feel be. Feel like DJ. anybody could be a DJ. A lot I'm of people could be a DJ, man. I don't know how you, bro. I, I really feel like anybody could be a DJ nowadays. You could go for it. It's easier to go for it than back in the days. It's definitely easier yeah. to go for it. It's easier, easier just grab a laptop, get your music selection, and go. You don't even need a laptop now. Dude. All you need is a USB. Some, yeah. <laughs> you all you need. All you need is a USB. And and I'm glad they. So, you, do you embrace this with open arms? Like it is what it is. It's just a game. It's just. It's just a game. You can't stop it, bro. You know, time is changing. It's evolution. Technology changed everything, and it's and it's gonna keep changing. You can't fight it. You know, so you gotta accept it for what it is. Um, everybody's gonna have an opinion, man. And and some people are gonna stink up there on the set, you know. And and that's I, that's why, like I said, uh, does a good DJ? You asked me, does a good DJ still matter? Yes, because those good DJs are always gonna get booked. Those good DJs are always gonna set a good vibe for a long period of time on the dance floor. And club owners that know the game well need that. They're always gonna need that. I think. How many? Yeah, Yo, there, there's some great, great great DJs that don't get paid a lot, don't have a huge, they don't get, they don't got a huge buzz, but you go to that city and you know you're gonna get that experience. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And they don't have a huge buzz, but you know who they are and it's, it's, it's a hit, it's not a miss, it's a hit. Oh, it's okay, boom. I call those DJs, they're, they're a DJ's DJ. Right. So like we could sit down and we could just be like, yo, we could just rock out, just listen to them work, and it's a, and it, it's no, and there's some, yeah, it's some, it's a lot of them. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of them. Don't sleep either. With that being said, there's a, I, I've seen a lot of new faces that kill. Be like, oh, oh this kid is nice, <laughs> yo. This kid is nice. Yeah. You know. So you know, the good comes the bad, man. You know, and, and those those that we were just talking about, those come and go quick. They do. They come, come and go quick. I just think this game is more about how many followers you have. Now. That too. That too. It, bro, it's, it's, the, it's the world we live in right now. You know, it's... um. The social media changed everything. Mm -hmm. You know, um... It's your resume now. Yeah. Do you think... Do you think it's easy to keep, keep this Instagram flowing no. on a regular? Snapchat flowing? TikTok flowing on a regular? It's not. It becomes work. To me, it's, it's borderline invasive. It's like, oh my God, I don't even want to post right now, but I have to to let people know what I'm up to. Right. And with the bad comes the good. At the same time, you're talking to a lot of people right away yep. from your bedroom. Yep. Bro, that's unheard of when I was coming up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're promoting your shit right then and there for free to the world. That's unheard of, man. You would have to pay for that back in the day. So with the good comes the bad, man. And and to me, social media is also a blessing, bro. It's, it's, you know. If you know how to use it, yes. Yeah, you gotta know how to use it. You just gotta go, man. That's I keep just just go, go. Just watch what you're doing and and, and be creative and be different. You know, I. I'm sorry. I like to say it all the time. I see a lot of people follow what we did already. Yeah. You know. I, I, I like, and I brag sometimes to my boys. You never see me bragging out, but, I, yo, this whole camera shit to the club, we started that shit. We were doing that shit. We were taking our fucking, um, what's the little camera, the GoPros. The GoPros. We was taking that shit and, and editing it and putting it out there. Everybody's doing it. Every DJ, you know, but I'm not, I'm not shitting on that. I'm just saying, you know, if you're different, motherfuckers will follow. All the time. Hey, like I said when we started this, you're a blueprint. 
You said I mean. <laughs> I say, I said absolutely. I say, and I, and and I say that with no problem because you are such a humble person, and I think that's part of the reason why you've been able to go so far in this game. Right. You are extremely humble. I don't, I don't need you. Like, it just is what it is. I think also, you know, and I tell you, the longevity is you gotta love the game, man. If you don't love the game, you're not gonna last long. You know, even and 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 when shit evolves, shit, bro, this DJ shit evolves quickly now. Damn it's man. quick. Yeah, right yeah. so so you gotta love the game if you don't love the game yeah you might get a couple of great gigs and you might be hot for a year you might be hot for a summer but it what really counts is you hot for fucking 10 summers yep. you know what i'm saying that that's that's where it's at it's easy to get on but staying on yeah bro <laughs> for real like like does your phone still keep ringing 15 years later you know what I'm saying? Can you pick up the phone and say, oh, damn, I can't do it, bro, because I'm in fucking Atlantic City this week. You know, so you're just trying to, you know, that that's the hard part. How did how did DJ Camillo create such a successful following? Um, that's a great question. Uh, I, I, once again, man, I'm going to take it back to the mixtape games. I think I created a following since those mixtape games, mixtape date games, and never let the foot off the pedal meaning it was the mixtape games and then all oh, the little merch the little shirts the little this the little collecting emails i used to collect emails at the club promoters to hate that shit. <laughs> yo i used to bring a guest this girl with me to the club right and while i'm on she's over there hey can you sign camillo's guesses and put in an email right at the end of the fucking week we had 300 emails i was dumping in a database and sending a blast out to everybody. This is where I'm at this week. And I'm just promoting myself. Yeah. I'm not promoting, I'm promoting like, you know, and, co and constantly with that frame of thinking like, yo, we gotta keep promoting. And this is before social media. Like, I, that was my thing, like always, always. And I think with that mentality is how you create a strong, solid, following after a while you get to, you get you get this following that they'll just follow you anywhere bro they're loyal. right they're loyal you know we've done miami trips trips to punta cana trip, and they follow you and 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 it's and then you start to see the real fans like the real wow and you could do you could create that man but it's work it's work don't think because you're getting booked at la boom that you're creating a fan base <laughs> No. It takes much more than that. Yeah, man. It takes it takes time and years of work. And I think, you know, and then mixtapes and then my app and then my website and then the radio and then the clubs and then, you know, just being a cool motherfucker and shouting out every birthday and stopping for every picture and, you know, doing a sweet sixteen when I don't I don't like doing sweet sixteens. Why not? It's it's not or a wedding. You know, it's not my thing. I like a crowd of a club. That's my what I love. Right. But with that being said, when there was that one fan that followed me for many years, oh my daughter's a sweet sixteen. How do you say no to that one person? You know what I'm saying? So okay, yeah, no doubt. So we're gonna do it and make that whole happy, you know? Make that world so make them happy and that's how you create followers, man. Like you gotta be a people's person. And that's, that's when you're a DJ, you gotta be a people's person. Absolutely. You know, if you're not a people's person, I've heard it from, and I would never drop names, but oh, he's so cocky. That DJ so cocky, big DJ, so cocky. You know, I never said I never want people talking like that about me. Only because, and I know some of those DJs, and at the end of the day, there's some cool motherfuckers. But I know what this, I know, I see the angle what they're talking about. Yeah. And I'm like, nah, I don't want to be that. I don't ever want to be that. That's so whack. Yeah. I think I, that's, that's one word that always comes to, to, to the conversation whenever your name is brought up. Humble. Camilo is... I think, but then, you know, at the same time, it's not that I'm trying to be humble. I think I am humble. It's like, just the way you are. Right. I, you know, whether... And I think that's, that's, that's part of the reason, like I said before, that's part of the reason why... I feel like you've gone so far also. Because you're, you're, you're somebody that's not unapproachable. Right. You know, they, right. They, Which can also be dangerous. Yeah. It, you know, it's not always a great thing to be approachable at all times. But I'm that type of dude. Like, there's times I've gone to the club with the squad, eight deep. And we get out the club. And by the time we get to the car, 
It's been 15 minutes because I stopped to talk to this person. Yeah. I, uh, and the picture, and the this, and the ah. Uh, oh, yeah, and you want to, oh, this, this, this CD you want to give me that I don't really want to take, but I'm going to take anyway. Take you, know, you know, my boys used to hate that shit. <laughs> can, we, can we fucking go home? <laughs> yeah, no. It, it I say, yo, you want to roll with me, right? Where do you see Camilo in five to ten years? I don't know, bro. I, you know what? They asked me that five years ago. And I couldn't answer that. Yeah, oh, here we go. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, because this, this guy finished his a long time ago. <laughs> Thank you. He might not walk out of here after this one. <laughs> Frozen sangria is that blend. Salute, Cheers. Brother. Yes. <laughs> Land on the water. Mm. So, um, what was I saying? Give me something, man. Five to ten years. Where do you see Camilo? But I, you know, um, owning more of these, and 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 I'm working on them already. So. Um, I got one of these blend going coming to Brooklyn. Okay. All right. Um, should have been open by now, but pandemic fucked us of up. Of So we on it. We're moving out of New York. That's coming. That's already sealed. So hopefully, two to three, two years that'll be open. Um, and and I really, you know, I really want to take this brand right here. Get it and for the camera. I want to. I want to take that brand right there. Yes. And 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 make it. Make it into that franchise that you can go to. You know, every big city, and we're there. It's hard. It's a goal. Will it happen? I don't know, but we're on it. No, I don't like that energy. That no, 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 no. I'm being realistic. I'm being realistic. We're on the way. We're, we're, we're on the way, and, and that's that's my goal. And let's see. Because, uh -huh. I mean, listen, when you open Blend right there, right? Baby. You didn't think that no. it was going to get this far, right? No. You told me it was going to But it wasn't a goal, neither. It wasn't a goal, neither. It was, yo, I have this idea. Let's open this restaurant up. I'm with it. How much does it cost? What? Fuck it. Let's do it. Let's go. We went. We did it. We took L's for two years. L's. I mean L's to the point where they don't want to give these Spanish kids a liquor license. Wow. So we were open for two years without a liquor license. Oh my we proved everybody wrong. They gave us beer and wine. Mm. We proved them wrong. They gave us a liquor license. We came here, applied for the same liquor license. They gave it to us with no problem. Succeeded here. We went to Astoria. Liquor license, no Like, you know. And... It happens. So, so you know, it's a time, man, and, and learning, learning the game, bro. Learning the game. Yeah, we we did mistakes. We did bad mistakes. Everybody. You right, and that's the best way to learn. Yeah. That's the best way to learn and not quit, not give up, because we took them L's, and we learned. And it, will those mistakes have ever happen again? No, because you learn from your. You're supposed to learn from your mistakes. Now. Would you also use that as advice for upcoming DJs? Like, never give up, never quit. I want, I want some advice from Camilo, because I'm sure you get asked this all the time. Yeah. DJs. Like, what is some advice you could give the, these upcoming DJs that look up to you, that, that, that see I, you, I, you know, I've always said, yeah, I've always said never give up. I've always said that, you know, if this is your true passion, you got to love it. It's number one. If you don't love it and you're here for the money, then you're going to be here for a very short time. You got to love music. And here's the most important thing that I tell everybody. You know, it's never bad to learn from Frank Roth and from Camilo and Enough and whoever else. Never bad to learn. But don't, don't, how can I put it? Learn, but don't bite. And that's a word, that's an old school word. I know it's an old school word and I use it and I still <laughs> it's use it. All good, it's all good. Learn, don't bite. Like you could take ideas, but try to create your own, your own, your own lane. You know, you created uh, the elephant in the room, which ain't nobody heard, ever heard of. Nobody got, you got that fucking drop in the club that's, <laughs> you know, in a club which, it's, you know, it's different. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's what stands you out from, makes you Frank Roth. You know, learn from other, learn from everybody. You know, take little ideas from everybody, cool. But create your own shit. Absolutely. You know, that's how you stand out. Um, 
and 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 put all your heart into it man you know it, I, I think i think it's easy and harder now now 2021 easier and harder easier is it's easier to be a dj now oh hell yeah but it's harder harder to compete because you have more you got to compete with back in the days let's say you had to compete with 20 soldiers now you got to compete with 100 soldiers like you got to like there's a lot of competition That's you know what i'm saying and you know, a lot of people come to me and say, yo, but he's DJ for free. This is that. Maybe that's his hustle to get on. You know, and that same kid that's DJ for free right now, three years later, he's popping. Yep. Maybe, you know, is it fair? It is what it is, man. There's no exactly. rules to this game. Yeah, no there ain't no rules to this game, man. You know, uh, um, you could charge what you could, you know, you could charge what you want to charge once you get big, man. Once you have a following, once you, like I tell everybody this, I'm going to say one thing, I tell DJs this, I can charge what I want to charge because I know and the club owner knows that that bar that night yep. is going to ring this amount. So it's worth it for that person to put that bag on me. You know what I'm saying? And it's business. You got to learn business. That's business. That's not talent. That's, 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 that's black not, white. right. That's, that's business. That's straight, you know. You got to know business, too, on top of that. Absolutely. Now, listen, I was going back and forth in my mind whether we should play this game or not, but I want to I wanna ask you a couple things before we, before we get out of here. I have this list of DJ editing, like things that DJ does or should or shouldn't do, and I call, and I call this game warning versus danger because obviously warning is a ring. <laughs> so warning meaning good because I feel like you turn warning into it's a good, good thing. thing. Yeah, yeah. Danger meaning bad. So I gotta ask you these things. All right. <laughs> warning if it's good, danger if it's bad. Go for it. A DJ asking to play for 50 more minutes when you're about to get on after this set is done. You letting that slide? Is that a warning or is that danger? Yeah, I mean, there's so many scenarios to that. But I would say respect danger. I would say respect for what it is, man. Like, you know, let's say, because this happened to me. Oh, I'm late 20 minutes. So let me, you know, what? <laughs> Nigga, you're late. <laughs> that has nothing to do with me. Yeah. Absolutely. Keep it moving, bro. Okay. okay. All right, so danger. Yeah, that one got danger. A DJ asking to go on your laptop to see the last 10 songs you played before you get to him. Um, warning. Warning, that's cool with you? Yeah, I call that professional. Why? Because he's going to get on. Well, I do that all the time. And why do I do it? Because I'm about to get on and I do not want to play what you just played 10 minutes ago. And people be violating. DJs violate. All day. And, and not only that, I want to see what, the, what this man did the last 10 minutes so i could take this shit somewhere else right because let's say he just dropped the hottest drake song when i just walked in the club and i didn't hear it and that's the hottest drake song and i get on and destroy your whole energy. so you know that's called you know he's you're, you're prepping for your set and you need to at least know you know so that's a warning that's a warning that's a warning okay it's cool with me the owner or promoter but listen the club is rocking right uh oh the club in dubai White. White. You and white, the club is rocking. Killing it. Club owner or the promoter comes up to you and says, Yo, switch this genre. I don't want to hear no more of this. Ooh. That's a tough one. Um warning. Why? Wow. Yeah, it, it's it, 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 it sucks. It sucks, but but you could take it two ways. You know, this is the way the club owner. The club owner, the club promoter. Right. Or unless you have different answers. Right. Um, them guys, they're there for for business, nothing else. So, Absolutely. so it could be that they got some big, and and I'm not for this, by the way. They could be they have some big spenders right there, right? And they want to hear reggaeton, and no reggaeton has been played, but those big spenders want that. You know what I'm saying? You gotta kind of cater to them. You know what I'm saying? Okay, it's like. Right, you gotta bite the bullet. And remember what I said earlier, it's 20% you, 80% the yeah. crowd. You gotta make them happy, man. And I know some DJs are gonna look at this and be like, yo, he's bugging. <laughs> okay, cool, but I've been in the game long, man. You gotta make that motherfucking crowd happy. Yeah. And there's a reason why that club owner or club owner is telling you that. That's a fact. You know what I'm saying? So, 
Yeah. It sucks sometimes. It sucks because you, you as a DJ, you want to get in there and do what the fuck you do. Yeah. What you got hired to do. But yeah. So that one, that one gets a one. Yeah. Okay. A fellow DJ wanting five to ten minutes of your time to talk to you about how you inspire them, how you motivate them, uh, but you are in the middle that's of danger, fucking danger, DJ. Danger, 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 <laughs> danger. Yeah, danger. Yeah, you got to cut that off. Like, we could do that after I'm done. I'm on, baby. Like, I'm on. I'm on. Like, what are we going to do? Have a conversation? There's, you there's, really want to have conversations. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I, I, I you know... And it happens a lot. I've seen it happen to you. Yeah. Where you're just trying to DJ and a thousand people, yo, yeah. yo, yeah, yo, yeah, yo, yeah, you're yeah. tapping. Yeah. You got the headphones too, so you yeah. got to yeah. Yo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A birthday shot is cool. I'll stop for that. Yeah. I'll stop for this. Do you want to talk and have a full convo about, what, you know, your artist? It's, it's not the time. Absolutely. Okay, so that that's where I said, Big Lou, yo. Getting lit while DJ. Ah oh, man, that's I think everybody's guilty of that. Um, once in a blue, it's a warning. <laughs> Every week is dangerous, danger. Very dangerous. Like you can't, like you know, it's happened to me. You know, yeah. you get nice. It's easy to get nice. Um, once in a blue, it's a warning. It happens. Okay. But it consistently taking money for song requests. Ah. Uh, Warning. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know. Quick story. I've had somebody request a song, right? Give me the money. Hold up, hold up. But right. there's there's a difference. Like, taking money and say, here, can you play my song from an artist that nobody in that fucking crowd knows? That's Which kills the entire crowd. That's dangerous. That's dangerous. <laughs> taking money from this table. Right here, yo, play that fucking new pop smoke shit. Nah, <laughs> that's a warning. Like, I got you. you know. it is what it is. It's okay. a tip, like okay. you know. A DJ not using headphones. I don't use headphones. You could be honest. Go ahead. No, yeah, nah, that's a warning, man. I, I, I had this conversation not too long ago, and I feel like that's a, a craft. Like, that doesn't make you a good or bad DJ at all. That means you know your cues very fucking well. That means you know your library very well uh, and and how to manipulate that set and how you do and you know what the fuck you're doing. That's it. And and you know, a lot of the younger guys, they don't need headphones. Why? Because they grew up just with laptops. Yep. And they're cueing their shit and they just know their shit. They know their shit. You know, I come from an era where I play with vinyl, and I've, you know, I don't drop every single song the same way. Right. Every time. So I need my headphones, me. And I prefer my headphones, that's me. But I think that's the DJ's preference. If, if the DJ's getting the job done and killing the shit, there ain't no rules to this shit, man. I've you can't, you know. criticize me for that. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard DJs hate on other DJs. Oh, he don't even use no headphones, okay? But he's killing that shit. And that's what really matters. That's it. You know. Absolutely. Now, can I do it? Probably. I probably could do it. Can I do it as you got you? No. <laughs> Fuck no. You have. But listen, everybody's different. Right. And everybody has their own little everybody formula. Has right. Their own thing. And and listen. So that's a warning. That's, that's that's a warning. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. So thank you so much. You know, for having us here. Yo, hold up. Survive. Before you go, go how was the arepita? Yo, that shit was popping. That shit was popping. I'm still, I'm still taking down this. I just didn't want because I was talking too much. I don't know. <laughs> that's that's a corn cake with a little beef in it, avocado, tomato, blah blah blah. All the good stuff. We're gonna have to get like a zoom in on that eventually yeah, or something like that. We're gonna get all that beautiful <laughs> stuff. But Camilo, thank you so much. Mr. Thank you, bro. Bye -bye. Yo, I, I'm gonna keep it a buck. I, I haven't done um, no podcasts, no, no, none of these, and, and I'm staying away from it. But once you ask, like, damn, man. You know, Frank is one of the good ones, yo. <laughs> Thank you, my He's one of the good ones, yo. He's real, like, uh, you know what I'm saying? He's different. And, and, and there, was, there was these videos that you were doing. Um, the best, uh, I know. I, 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 I forget the ever, name. That's what it was called. Yeah, best it was with your boy. Um, sure. Yeah, and I, was, I, I looked at those videos. I was like, yo, this shit is, is fun and it's different. And, and I enjoy shit like that, you know. And you, you, that's, called, that's called stepping out the box. 
And when you see some shit like that, I'm like, oh, I respect that. So that's why I'm doing this. I got, appreciate it so you know. much. Thank you. You are the elephant pig. Ah. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're looking, for both. Ladies and gentlemen, we Warning. are here. Warning. <laughs>